Hello, Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3. Yesterday, I uploaded a clip of Owen Colfer's Artemis Fowl, the first book in his sequence of books about the criminal teenage mastermind. Um, it wasn't very long, and I thought you might like to hear chapter one just to get more of a flavour of this book and to see if maybe this series is for you. It really is fab. So chapter one, the book. Ho Chi Minh City in the summer, sweltering by anyone's standards. Needless to say, Artemis Fowl would not have been willing to put up with such discomfort if something extremely important had not been at stake. Important to the plan. Sun did not suit Artemis. He did not look well in it. Long hours indoors in front of the monitor had bleached the glow from his skin. He was white as a vampire and almost as testy in the light of day. I hope this isn't another wild goose chase, Butler, he said, his voice soft and clipped, especially after Cairo. It was a gentle rebuke. They had travelled to Egypt on the word of Butler's informant. No, sir, I'm sure this time. Nguyen is a good man. Hmm, groaned Artemis, unconvinced. Passers-by would have been amazed to hear the large duration refer to the boy as sir. This was, after all, the third millennium. But this was no ordinary relationship, and these were no ordinary tourists. They were sitting outside a curbside cafe on Dan Kai Street, watching the local teenagers circle the square on mopeds. The Guyen was late, and the pathetic patch of slade provided by the shade provided by the umbrella was doing little to improve Artemis's mood. But this was just his daily pessimism. Beneath the sulk was a spark of joy. Could this trip actually yield results? Would they find the book? There was too much to hope for. A waiter scurried to their table. More tea, sirs, he said, head bobbing furiously. Artemis sighed. Spare me the theatrics and sit down. The waiter turned instinctively to Butler, who was, after all, the, the adult. But, sir, I am the waiter. Artemis tapped the table for attention. You are wearing handmade loafers, a silk shirt and three gold signet rings. Your English has a tinge of Oxford about it, and your nails have the soft sheen of the recently manicured. You're not a waiter. You are our contact. Neguing Zuan, and you have adopted this pathetic disguise to discreetly check for weaponry. Nguyen's shoulders sagged. It is true. Amazing. Hardly. A ragged apron does not a way to make. Nguyen sat, pouring some mint tea into a tiny china cup. Let me fill you in on our weapon status, continued Artemis. I am an unarmed. But Butler here, my, uh, Butler, has a Sig Sauer in his shoulder holster, three shrike throwing knives in his boots, a Derringer two-shot up his sleeve, garrote wire in his watch, and three stun grenades concealed in various pockets. Anything else, Butler? The kosh, sir. Oh, yes, a good old ball-bearing kosh stuffed down his shirt. Nguyen brought the cup, trembling to his lips. Don't be alarmed, Mr Zuan, smiled Artemis. The weapons will not be used on you. Nguyen didn't seem reassured. No, continued Artemis. Butler could kill you a hundred different ways without the use of armoury, though I am sure one would be quite sufficient. Nguyen was by now thoroughly spooked. Artemis generally had that effect on people. A pale adolescent speaking with the authority and vocabulary of a powerful adult. Nguyen had heard the name Fowl before, who hadn't in the international underworld, but he'd assumed he'd be dealing with Artemis Senior, not his boy. Though the word boy hardly seemed to do this gaunt individual justice. And the giant butler. It was obvious that he could snap a man's backbone like a twig with his mammoth hands. Nguyen was starting to think that no money, or amount of money, was worth another minute in this strange company. And now to business, said Artemis, placing a micro-recorder on the table. You answered our web advertisement. Nguyen nodded, suddenly praying his information was accurate. Yes, Mr. Master Fowl, what you're looking for... I know where it is. Really? And I am, am I supposed to take your word for this? You could be walking me straight into an ambush. My family is not without enemies. Butler snatched a mosquito out of the air beside his employer's ear. No, no, said Nguyen, reaching for his wallet. Here, look. Artemis studied the Polaroid. 
he ruled his heart to maintain a calm beat. It sounded promising, but anything could be faked these days with a PC and a flatbed scanner. The picture showed a hand reaching from layered shadows, a mottled green hand. Hmm, he murmured, explain. This woman, she's a healer near Trudeau Street. She works in exchange for rice wine, all the time drunk. Artemis nodded. It made sense, the drinking. One of the few consistent facts his research had unearthed. He stood, smoothed the creases from his white polo shirt. Very well. Lead on, Mr. Nguyen.